It's the TMZ Behind the Bar podcast with the TMZ lawyers, Jason Beckerman and Derek Kaufman. Welcome, everyone, to the Behind the Bar podcast, where each week we bring our perspective to the biggest stories in celebrity news. Earlier this week, Derek, TMZ posted a picture featuring Taylor Swift and a DJ by the name, radio DJ by the name of David Mueller, uh, which is now evidence at the center of a nasty defamation and sexual assault lawsuit between the two. The picture no one wanted to see, Jason. The picture she never no wanted, wanted to anyone see, to see. But thanks right. to TMZ, everybody has now. Uh, TMZ posted the picture and elicited thousands of questions and comments from our audience and sparked a debate about whether the photograph is a smoking gun of sexual assault or just an innocuous piece of circumstantial evidence that can be brushed aside. Today I'm behind the bar, and i got to tell you, nowhere was that more fiercely debated than on the newsroom of TMC with the cameras off, and we can get into a little bit of that debate. It's uh, true. We've had some strong debates. We, you, Derek and I have. Um, today I'm behind the bar. We're going to discuss how the photograph came to light, its significance to Mueller's claim that T-Swift defamed him, and how a single photograph that is viewed so differently by different people can prove or disprove that someone has committed a heinous act of sexual assault. I'm Jason Beckerman. And I'm Derek Kaufman. Derek, it's a little bit difficult for a podcast, but it's important, I think. Can you describe the photo, which we have in front of us, this photo in as much detail as you can, sort of give them a real honest picture of what it is that we're looking at? Sure, absolutely. This is a picture of three people. This was from a concert in Denver in 2013, and what you are in front of a sort of a, a, a step through, like a, a red carpet type background where it says the red tour. It's One concert. of these backgrounds that have like the advertisers' names on it and the name of the thing, and the, the celebrity stands in front and takes lots of pictures with people. That's exactly right. And you've got Taylor Swift in the middle. It's three people. She's leaning into a, a blonde-haired woman, and she's standing, posing for a photograph. And there's a man on the right of the picture. And he comes over to the picture and has one hand on his hip, the hand not closest to Taylor, and one hand uh, placed around her buttocks region behind Taylor Swift, who's in a black dress. Okay, right. So Taylor Swift, I would say her expression, it's a static photo. This is not a video, so you can right. only make so much of it. But she has... What could be described as a, a smile, maybe a, a slight discomfort? The woman is smiling broadly, and the man is smiling broadly. Yeah, let's. Uh, I think if you look at Taylor Swift's smile, we can read into it based on what we know about the allegations, which we'll talk about in a second. But her face looks like it probably. Her face looks like a woman who has now taken the three thousandth exactly. picture of the evening. You can't really glean much from that. Her skirt is short, and that's I'm certainly not slut shaming or, or skirt shaming. No, it's at about all. A, it's about a foot above the knees, or six you know six yeah. to eight inches above the knees. But it's like. a typical skirt, which but the length of the skirt becomes relevant for the story. Um, the guy, Taylor Swift is leaning in for sort of a huggy photo with the woman where their bodies are sort of pressed up against each other and their yes. arms are on each other. The guy is a bit separate from that, and he's reaching his hand out, and we can, D- Derek and I will debate this in a minute, but yep. reaching his hand out. So it's behind her, her butt, but you can't tell if contact's being made. We you don't can't know. tell. It's definitely you, behind her butt, but you don't know if he's touching her butt or not. That's right. That's right. It could. You don't know the distance between uh, his hand and her butt. It could have been against right. it. It could have been. Now, the, the allegation that was made, and, and we can get well, let me, into Let this. me back up for one yeah. second. I wanted to make a point for the audience, which is this photograph until uh, is, it was and is sealed by the court. There was a order issuing, uh, an order issued by the court sealing this photo. It was not to be leaked by the parties to the public or the media. That's right. Uh, TMZ got its hands on the photos notwithstanding and and published it. Now we've all had a chance to look at it, and we'll get into a little bit more about why we think the judge may have sealed it and whether that was appropriate or not, but I think for right now what we need to, to discuss is what it showed, what, what the allegations are, what the allegations that concerning this photo that Taylor made against the guy, the cross allegations that he made against her. That's right. So let's take a step back. So we'll, we'll, we'll get back into what that photo actually says, whether, you know, photos speak a thousand words, right? They do. The picture speaks a thousand words. Well, let's get into some of the context. So Taylor Swift, uh, back in September of 2015, was sued by a radio DJ, and his name is David Mueller. He says he attended a Swift concert in, in, in 2013. He was invited backstage. It was a meet and greet type situation. She took a lot of photos, as you were saying. He says uh, they took a photo and nothing came of it. Later, he says, I ran into a co-worker who was bragging about putting his arms around Taylor Swift and grabbing her butt during the photo shoot. He said, in his lawsuit, he says, uh, I was approached by a security guard. I was accused of grabbing her butt at that point and kicked out of the arena, and I was subsequently fired from my radio gig. He's probably one of these morning DJs, frogger in the morning type guys. He looks like a sort of 
uh, fun loving guy. He sued her and said, you know, you defamed me and I lost my job. My damages so, so are that who I had lost she my defamed job. him to? What what, how, how, what did she complain immediately he, upon after taking the photo? Apparently, that's what she says. He was a he says he was approached by a security guard later. He doesn't. Yeah. I don't know the exact time frame, but yeah. after after the picture was taken and accused of grabbing her butt and says that this somehow got back to his employer. He uh. suspects that Taylor started the story uh, after throwing him out of the arena and he subsequently lost his job because of it. So, he's so saying, he turns and sues her basically for defamation. Basically your your that was lie my about my conduct caused me to lose my job, right. so I'm going to sue you for damages as a result. That's right. That's right. Now, Taylor, rather than just answering the lawsuit, there's two ways to respond to a lawsuit. You can either deny that you lied or you can countersue. She countersued. She did both, really. She did both. Yeah, that's right. She answered yeah. the lawsuit and then she also said, I got a lawsuit of my own. You sexually assaulted me. Right. And she, she countersued and said, I didn't falsify this story. I remember who you are. I remember the moment you groped my butt, you lifted my skirt, and you grabbed my butt. She, she gave deposition problem. testimony later on where she confirmed these allegations in a little bit more detail. That's right. And the deposition was 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 lurid. I mean, she said in the deposition, uh, he he, gra- he grabbed my, as soon as he grabbed my ass, I became shocked and withdrawn and was barely able to say thanks for coming, which is what I say to everyone. It was like somebody switched the lights off in my personality. She's describing the emotional trauma from this. She's saying, and these, these are the important words, I think, for our discussion. He reached up under my skirt and grabbed my ass right when I was having to pose for a photo. And it felt intentional that would be the time to choose to do so. The next quote is, it's impossible to know if that was in the moment before he grabbed my ass. She's talking about the photo now. But I was there, so I felt it, so I didn't just see it in a photo afterwards. She's saying, I experienced it, and this is the smoking gun of of this incident. Right. And so now we're left with the photo. She wanted to, they both went into court and said, let's keep this under wraps. It's going to taint the jury pool. It's going to uh, make it difficult for me to get an impartial jury, because if it's out there, the media's talking about it, and they're going to have a preconceived notion. So so she's uh, absolutely certain that it was him. He seems to have suggested that it might have, she may be conflating him with another friend of his, and that other friend of his may have told him that it was him that grabbed her ass and not him. She's very certain, She's very adamant, adamant that, that it was in fact him. Uh, get a couple things out of the way. Number one, a, a grab of the ass, whether uh, a, a, you know, a quick rub or a pinch or whatever it might a be, goose, a pinch, whether anything. over the clothes or under the clothes is sexual assault. And you can, there's no criminal charges here. You could theoretically be charged criminally for it, but you can certainly also be sued for it. Uh, what Taylor's damages are, probably not great. She says that, however, she suffered some emotional damages. Those That's are certainly right. recognizable by the court. I don't think this is really about money for Taylor Swift. And she said as much in her yeah. lawsuit. I forgot to mention that. She said, I'm going to uh, give the proceeds of this lawsuit if I were to win against you to charity. Right. And so she is, she's in it for proving a point, not for, for uh, right. you know, the damages for her emotional harm. And in many ways, he brought this fight on himself by, in the first, remember, he sued her. She complained. That's right. He got fired, although... He has concrete damages, Jason. Yeah, he really does. He is attributing the loss of his job, his livelihood, and how he pays the bills, to Taylor Swift's lie about him. That is David Mueller's case. Now, a couple of quick quick legal points, and then we'll get into uh, the sealing of the photo and some other issues. Um, Number number one, if if Taylor Swift is right and this guy grabbed her ass— She defeats the defamation claim, and she also proves her claim of uh, her claim for sexual assault. That's right. That's a twofer, right? That's Truth a twofer. is an absolute defense to the defamation claim. That's right. And then she's proven an unwanted touching because she said right. it was unwanted. Now, she wins. Derek, what if she's she very much believes that it was him who grabbed her ass, but he's wrong? What happens to it? He sued her for defamation, saying you lied about me, it cost me my job. But what if she happens to be wrong? It was the friend. The friend gets up and testifies. You know what? It was me. Yeah. Does David Mueller have a good claim against her? You know what? I don't think his claim is as good. Yeah. I, I, I don't because if it, she's laboring under a mistaken belief, a good faith belief that it was this guy and this that pattern shirt. That is not defamation it's not by defamation. Defi- defamation by definition. It's an intentional It's an intentional act. You in- you knew something was false and you said it anyways. You said it You said it anyways with the intent to mislead somebody as to the true, ass- the true nature of what happened. Now, I'll throw a curveball at you. Yeah. If she thought there was another guy, yeah. and she and someone said, Taylor, the security guard said, it was actually that guy. And she said, no, it wasn't. And he said, yeah, but I can see he's got your fabric on it on his palm. It was that guy. And she just said, forget it. Bring me David Mueller and kick him out of here. Yeah, what I do mean, you get there? Because that starts to seem like reckless it starts, disregard. It starts to get there. But so, so what Derek's talking about, in order to prove defamation against a, against a famous person, and David Mueller is, he puts himself out there. He's a radio DJ. He's trying to uh, increase his fame. He took a picture with a very famous person. 
person. In order for that person, David Mueller, to prove defamation, he must say, show that either she knew that it wasn't him, but she but she concocted an allegation that he grabbed her ass. That would be one way to prove it. Or you'd have to show reckless disregard for the truth. Basically, you were pretty sure it wasn't him, or you had reason to believe it wasn't him, but you know what? You went out there and did it anyways. Right. But that's a pretty hard claim for him to make. I mean, Taylor's, These are high hurdles. These are high hurdles. Yeah. And really, what is Taylor Swift's motivation to badmouth this guy? You know, one, one of the things we were talking about, we were debating in the newsroom floor is Taylor Swift probably takes 500,000 photos a year mm -hmm. with fans. This is just another fan. We cover her quite closely here at TMZ. We have never heard her complain about a single fan doing a single thing to her over the very many years we've been covering her. This is the one time she's ever complained about a fan doing anything wrong with her in a photo, and there just happens to be a photograph with his hand behind her ass. So for him to show that she acted with reckless disregard for the truth and knowing it probably wasn't him but made the allegations anyways, that's a really high hurdle in this case. I think you're right. I think on the defamation claim, you're absolutely right. I do, however, also believe that this photo isn't as damning as she thinks with respect to the sexual assault claim that she leveled against him. Now, remember, her burden is entirely upon her for that so claim. So to prove correct? her sexual assault to claim, prove... she must prove 50.1%, a preponderance of the evidence right. to a jury in order to get them to go in her direction that he, in fact, did this, grabbed her ass. Committed a sexual battery. And there's yeah. got to be con contact for that. I don't think the picture gets you there. I think it's really helpful on the defamation claim. I'm not so sure. What I mean, what, what do you think about the battery? Because there's no sense of the distance. Now, if he hovered behind there, you're saying, what else do you do behind there? I, I, I would propose this theory, and I don't know what his lawyers are necessarily thinking, that his wife was taking the photo, and she you quickly the, summoned the, him over. Is the blonde his wife? The blonde is uh, either a girlfriend or a wife. Okay, the it, it is someone he so knows. So the woman in the photo is is somehow affiliated with someone him. Someone affiliated with him, and she says, honey, get over here. I want you in this photo. He walks over, leans in, and maybe just leans near there, and, and his hand is placed lower. I will admit, the hand is lower than... I would put it in a photo. Usually yeah. my hand is, is is much higher. So it is a suspicious place, but I'm not sure it shows any contact or that she can prove her case with this photo alone. What well, do you think? Well, I, I think there, with the photo alone, perhaps not, but I think there's more evidence than that. The evidence being that she, very shortly after the photo was taken, complained that her ass had been touched by this guy mm -hmm. with no motivation to do so. You add that to the photo showing his hand immediately behind her, her butt, and you don't know if it's touching or not. Right. And I go back to what bad Bad luck for this guy it is if he didn't touch her butt because he 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 you know the one time that she makes she files this complaint and there is a photo that seems to suggest that his hand is very close to her ass mm -hmm. and you know we can move past this idea that the photo is suspicious but it doesn't show anything the photo is really suspicious he is standing in a very awkward way I have taken pictures with celebrities before not many people I've seen on the street I hate doing it but I bothered yeah. them for their photos I put my hand around their shoulder around the middle of their back uh, you know the middle of their back that's right. a typical place when you're taking a photo with somebody you don't know your hand goes behind the middle of their back instead right. his hand is way down below he's much taller than she is so he's reaching far down, and his hand is directly behind her ass. And I just don't know how you just... And it, it, so what I'm saying is, it's really bad luck for him if he didn't touch her. Sure. The photo makes it look like she, he did, and she complained about it. Yeah, but she's still got that burden, ultimately, to show that there was actual touching. She's described it in lurid detail, and all I'm saying is she's going to... There is some context there. Sometimes smoke is just smoke. They say where there's smoke, there's fire. This is a smoky picture, Jason. I'll give you that. Yeah. But, uh, you know, we took a picture. I believe when Meatloaf came into the office, we were both very excited about Meatloaf. Yeah, I love Meatloaf. And our hands were not hovering anywhere near yeah. there. But I will also, I want to point out the physics really quickly. The physics of this picture, they do, this doesn't persuade Jason in quite the same way it persuade, persuades me, but we have a hand. One arm is showing. You can see the sleeve is rolled up. He would have to have a physically, grotesquely long hand to from this angle, reach under her skirt to grab what she describes in her deposition under sworn testimony as grabbing her bare butt. I don't think that's possible. Now, do I think that he what if his probably hand, what touched if his hand her? What if is yes. already on her ass in this photo? That's possible. That is certainly possible, but the, the fabric of the dress, I think, would be moved in a certain way yeah. if the way she described it. Now, granted, again, this is a photo. This is a static image. Yep. If there's a video of this, maybe the dress moved around, it looks more like an yep. ass grab, or maybe it doesn't. But until I see that, I'm not willing to say that he went as far as she said he went, I, I just, uh, just based on the picture I alone. just simply see the photo differently. I think what happened here is you that... You see a goose here. Uh, you you what, see what, this guy's think, smiling I face think and you what think you have, I, What you have is a radio DJ. Radio DJs, by definition, are kind of over-the-top kind of guys. <laughs> by who, definition? Yeah, that's what... The, 
not just people on the radio. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they're, they're over the top. Yeah. They're kind of loud and boisterous. Yeah. And I think he, his wife was taking a picture with one of those famous people in the world. He got very excited. He went over, and he, on a lark, goosed her. And you know what he did? He goosed the wrong woman. He grabbed the because wrong one. She she is not a woman who is in a lot of women. We talked about this in the newsroom. A ton of women would just take this, laugh through it, move on, and just kind of be bothered by it. But not Taylor Swift. And she complained about it. And he is caught brown hand. And she has <laughs> Jason. Sorry. And she has uh, the, other, the other point. I wasn't expecting brown hand, <laughs> yeah. but I, I tip my hat. And look, this Did is ta- serious stuff. Parker he, just audibly yeah. exhale. Was that an actual sigh? <laughs> yeah, an audible it Parker is sigh? Audible. Exhale. Um, but but look, it, it would be very serious stuff. We're, we're, we're sort of not making light of it. We're just discussing it openly. If this happened, it's horrible. He tangled with the wrong person. She does have nearly, effectively limitless resources to fight this until the end. She can go through trial. Yeah. Taylor Swift is worth hundreds of millions of dollars. So, uh, and good, on, good honor and if good he honor. did this. Yeah. Uh, good, good, good honor for doing it. Um, it it's interesting. Now, I, I want to go back yeah. to the, the other point. We've, we've exhausted the picture. Let's go I back to the have. other point of, of ceiling. You and I can really exhaust something i mean if we we could do an hour on this i think we're exhausting people (laughs) (laughs) i think we're irritating exhausting whatever you want to call it but the judge decided to uh they went into court and they said let's seal this record this is a very public joint document asking for this document to be sealed and and other documents they said look all of this is just going to cause a public sort of scandal that is unhelpful to resolving the issues between these two parties and that's not what courts are in the business of so let's keep this all the whole record under seal and do courts do that? Are courts willing to just cover it all up because these are two high-profile people, or at least one very high-profile? God, I, I hope not. Yeah. I, and I honestly believe that. I mean, the 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 public policy, certainly in California and throughout the country, and sort of our national policy, is that the public has a right to know things. And I know sometimes it's uncomfortable. I know sometimes it seems uh, scintillating or scandalous or lurid or whatever it might be, sensationalistic. But you know what? That is who we are. And I don't like the idea. It's what makes America special Yeah, it ways. really we is. We don't have secret star, what is it, uh, the star chamber? Yes. We don't have secret courts. I, I, we have pe- open People courts. go after TMZ and, and other similar publications and go out for, for disclosing things that really are are, you know, well, why do we really need to know that? That's not the inquiry. The inquiry is what right does the T- do the TMZs of the world or others of the world have to keep from the public information that we have? We are not special. Right. It's we, a question of defaults, and the default is openness. Openness. Now, there and are you exceptions. you got to prove why you want to close you, it. That, so, so, that, so what that, are the exceptions? That's the, that's the law in California. I can, I can read this to you. I pulled it. Um, the law in California, we are in favor of open evidence. We allow the public to see all court filings, all documents that are submitted in litigation. Um, and in order to overcome that default presumption of openness, the parties must show that there is an overriding interest supporting sealing the documents. And we see this all the time. We Mm -hmm. see it in in cases involving children, in cases involving finances of companies, because the overriding interest there would be that your competitors shouldn't have access to your financial records. Short trade secrets. You can imagine the recipe for Coke being involved in litigation with Pepsi. Sure. You couldn't have access to Coke's Trade secret and it happens all the, the time. If somebody sues Coke, which happens all the time, saying "Hey," or or whatever company, right. that's my I invented the the recipe for Coke, and and as part of discovery in that case, Coke relevant. has to turn over certain information showing this the the recipe, the highly relevant to the litigation, needs to be shown. But the court will enter a protective order sealing that and making sure that nobody gets their hands on it except for the absolute need to know people. That happens. I understand that we have a need to seal documents in certain cases, cases involving the military. There are certainly needs oh, to. Yeah. Yeah, you can say it. But here, national security is a big one. The FISA courts, which were very controversial, yes. were secret because you had to right. go get things done and 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 fish out secrets about people. But and here, you didn't want that public. All we have is two people who don't want their their this this photo, which is not lurid in any way. It doesn't show anybody's private bits. Uh, they said it appealed to the prurient interest. So which what? we all know. So what? I, I you know hear prurient you. interest for for those of you who who might not know is means a sexual sort of sexual nature within people. The sexual interest. They thought people yeah. were going to be masturbating to this photo. Yes, I mean but, that, that that's really what and, you're talking about. Talk about and as, as uh, much as I wish that Derek hadn't said that, it brings up a good point. <laughs> and my response is, so what? That's, That's the right. way system we live in. That's and right. if people want to to get get off on this photo, so what? That's right. where we live. And if you start making these judgments about what people should and shouldn't see, we're in for a long time. Now, road. I'd push back a little bit. They did... Um, articulate an interest, right? So yeah. they didn't come into court. They know the presumption of openness, and these lawyers are, are high-paid lawyers. They came in, and they didn't come in not loaded with a, a rationale for, yeah. for sealing these. And one was purry and interest, but the one that the court seized on when the court actually said, I'm going to leave the case open with the exception of the photo, which I will seal. And the reason he said is it would, quote, significantly complicate jury selection. So is this interest enough? 
Jason. Like, th- because if people see the photo, I think you would grant that this will complicate jury selection. People will come in with preconceived notions, and they will think, uh, I think Taylor Swift is full of it, or she's whiny, or I think this guy's a scummy pig. Yeah. On both directions, it's going to make finding a juror who doesn't know what's going on and can actually be unbiased more difficult. And that's Poppycock. what the judge... <laughs> Absolute <laughs> poppycock. It's just nonsense. It really is. I mean, you don't any, like that interest because it exists time, in every case. Anytime there's a famous person involved, every piece of evidence that is disclosed from that case will get notoriety, will get news. People will look at it, people will form conditions. You, we have a very robust jury selection service. It is not that difficult. We did it in the OJ Simpson case, we mm-hmm. do it in other cases. People are not necessarily going to be affected by what has come out before and it is the job of the judge and the job of the litigants the attorneys to make sure that doesn't happen and if you can't overcome that hurdle your honor you know shame on you because oh. you're not doing an effective job in, a, in jury selection wow you started shame. litigating Absolutely. shame on you yeah. shame on this judge for sealing the, for trying to seal this you vote. know what I, I i agree with you jason and the reason yeah. i agree is this would prove too much you would never a, be able to defeat a seal motion if you could say it would complicate jury selection it seems like sort of a, a catch-all provision yeah. or a or a, a, a sort of easy thing to say in every case now right. i will say most pic- if, if this picture were out obviously i couldn't control it but the judge saw here something to seize on to maybe not make his life more difficult with jury selection and have to impanel a bunch of people, and maybe yep. it will complicate it. But I, you're saying I totally that's not agree good with enough. you. The judge did yeah. this because it made his life easier. Yeah. And you know what? I don't give a damn. I care about honestly. I sound like I'm standing on a soapbox. Maybe I am, and I sound like I'm being like falsely indignant. But yeah. it's too bad. One too of bad. Harvey's apple boxes. Yeah, one of apple. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> one of the ones we use for. The, I'd be for much the show. tall. I'm taller than Harvey <laughs> when he's on the apple box. No, he's so cute on that apple hey, box. He though. really is. Um, so, so uh, yeah, I think I think that's it. Mail time. Kind of solved it. Mail time. All right. Mail this time. is like crossfire, by the way. I know. I feel like Chris Matthews. But I feel good right now. Like I feel exciting. I, like I a, wish I hadn't made the brown hand comment. But other than that, I'm really happy. With <laughs> I wish I hadn't said people will masturbate to the photo, but we all have regrets. <laughs> we do. I wish I had made a two out of three ain't bad joke when you mentioned meatloaf. So there we go. <laughs> all right. On that note, remember to write in your questions and comments to behind the bar at tmz.com first one is a comment from malik felder everything trump says has to go through congress which means he's not going to do anything i'm not sure about that well it's interesting this re- relates back a point i wanted to make to the podcast that we did a few weeks ago this was before the election where we discussed the four major promises of the trump administration from uh, deporting 11 million illegal immigrants to stopping Muslims from coming to this country, to prosecuting Hillary Clinton, making sure she goes to jail. To opening up libel laws. To opening up libel laws to impact news organizations. And I, I think now, that the, and in that discussion, we said, could Donald Trump do these? And many of them he could. I mean, immigration in particular, Congress has in, pa- in the past really vested almost all of the authority for immigration laws that would include barring Muslims from the United States and deporting 11 million illegal immigrants. Um, we in, said, within the within the auspices of the president, he can do it with the stroke of a pen. Yeah, we said those were. Look, we debated those as abstract and speculative. We're going to have some concrete answers on what he actually endeavors to do. And, and like Jason said, he doesn't have to go through Congress for a lot of things. Yeah. I mean, ask Obama. Executive orders are very, very powerful way yeah. to govern, especially when you have a recalcitrant uh, Congress that he had. Yeah. But he has a pliable one. He has a Republican-led uh, uh, House and Senate. So I'm not sure that just because things have to go through the House and Senate, it, it's all that much of a hurdle. Yeah. So we'll see. All right, next one up is from Serena from Ontario. Do you think it's Williams? Serena Williams? Yeah. Unlikely. From okay. Ontario. Probably not. Oh. <laughs> well, that solved it. Thanks, Parker. I think the guest bedrooms in the White House have got to be under video camera. Do you think so, too? I feel like the whole place is covered in secret cameras. Wow, that's a really good that's question. That's a good question, and I don't have the Do answer Do you think to Angela it. Merkel's like <laughs> bedtime routine is under some VCR? Just her, like, soft, I just imagine her softly VHS? propped up on pillows reading like a novel, maybe a romance novel. Oh, you don't know Mr. Merkel. He is, he's a quite <laughs> I don't, is there a Mr. Merkel? Of course there's a Mr. Merkel. Where's Mr. Merkel? I've never <laughs> seen Mr. Merkel. I would like to know more about him. I actually him. don't know if there's a Mr. Merkel. No, uh, I, would, I sincerely doubt that there are cameras within the guest bedrooms in the White House. Yeah, that I would think there's be some privacy something. interest. This I is mean, a public residence for the the highest executive. I doubt that that he parks yeah, all of his privacy at the Yeah, front door and the people that stay in these bedrooms, I mean the the, the queens and, and kings of the world, the presidents and and diplomats of the world. I I, I would be you know what? I don't. Ever you know since what? Edward though? Snowden. I, I don't I, know what to think. Anymore. I will say this: I don't think video recordings because I think there's no interest in in seeing uh, you know the president or his guests in their pajamas. But Nixon famously put audio recordings in a lot of the White House and not yeah. just the public rooms because he wanted full records of everything and there was some paranoia built in. Some of those were removed, I'm sure, but yeah. I wouldn't be as surprised if there were some audio recordings of Merkel just sort of hmm, chortling to herself yeah. over Well, Nixon over the was novel. a criminal. Uh, so uh, we won't get into that. That's a 
story for another day. Yeah. Uh, there is a Mr. Merkel, by the way. Oh, what's his name? Of course there's a Mr. Oh, Merkel. Please tell me his name is a Goethe Merkel. It's I want like to be Magnus. Jo- <laughs> Just no less. Johak. I don't know how to pronounce it. Johak. No, it's not that. It. You look it up. Okay. All right. Wait. Thanks, Parker. You've been unhelpful. <laughs> <laughs> he wanted to go with Mr. Merkel and move on. All right, the uh, next one is my favorite, uh, just context. Last week, Jason asked Derek if any president had a female portraiture. And Slave Bodybuilding writes in, and I'm paraphrasing because it goes on for a little bit. <laughs> so we had a Serena, and we had Slave Bodybuilding. I, I like how you, you're paraphrasing his question, but his name, you're going to get yeah. it full. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, he or she says that FDR had one named Elizabeth uh, Shomatov. FDR was actually sitting for Elizabeth when he suffered the cerebral hemorrhage that killed him. The unfinished portrait now hangs in the Warm Springs retreat in Georgia, known as the Little White House. For the record, I'm pretty sure FDR was sitting for all of his portraits. I don't think he like stood for many of okay, them. Okay, so so uh, Mr. Bodybuilder, um, Warm Springs, Arkansas. Warm Georgia. Springs was in Georgia. Georgia. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, I'm not sure that happened, but I, I love... looked it up. I think it's oh, interesting. You Do you know his, his last did. his last words? Um, I have a terrible pain in the back I have, of my head. I have a terrific headache, which is so old timey when they used to w- use the word terrific for something other like that couldn't be good. Yeah. I have a terrific headache. Uh, little what trivia, which yeah. we can you know not use if we don't want it. You know what the first uh, words ever transmitted by telegraph were? Oh, that's good by telegraph. Can you hear me now? <laughs> <laughs> tap tap tap. That would no. be odd if you. Yeah. Didn't, I mean, I see, that's <laughs> what we you know. I <laughs> see a ticker tape. Yeah. Uh, what had what hath God, God wrought? wrought. Yeah. Yes, that is good trivia. Yeah. Oh, uh, someone's gonna be disappointed with me that I didn't pull that right away. But ah. anyway, anyway, uh, is that it, Parker? That is it. All right. Thank you guys for writing in. Really appreciate it. We're getting a ton of great comments the last few weeks. Uh, tune in be, to Behind the Bar. Uh, download it from your from the podcast store on iTunes, SoundCloud, and everywhere else. Podcasts are available. Check it out on YouTube. Check it out on YouTube. We're uh, looking forward to next week. All right, thanks. Thanks for watching. If you want more nerdy deep dives into the legal side of celebrity news, hit our subscribe button right here. And check out our previous episodes over here.